Welcome back. We are joined in studio by Mr. Marty Moregi. He is a senior banking analyst at Standard Investment Bank. Now, during the uh, the break, um, Martin made a correction. There's something I quite did not get right. What he said is that the accrual basis of accounting means that the companies, the banks are accruing interest for this particular period. So the point is, don't necessarily be cautious when you're looking at the top line, but then there could be a question mark in as far as the cash flows for these entities are concerned. Maybe you can elaborate this for us. Cash flows, accrued basis of accounting, when the company is recognized, they have restructured the majority of their books, some banks such as equity as much as 45%. What does this imply when you're looking at cash flows, when you're looking at dividends, when you're looking at deposits for the banks? Okay. Uh, the, from, from an accounting perspective, it makes perfect sense what they're doing because, uh, like I said earlier, in as much as you restructured the loan, doesn't mean that you've gone ahead and forgiven that client the interest. So the the interest still accrued on the income statement. The only time a bank is supposed to suspend interest accrual is when that loan becomes non-performing. Okay. So when it comes to performing, you suspend that interest until when the loan start becoming performing. Now you can write back everything else that you had suspended. So from that perspective, from the top line, uh, makes sense. The question now becomes is for how long can you go ahead and accrue that interest? Because for instance, uh, if let's say a, a bank had gone ahead and restructured uh, a loan for three, six months, and then the last three months, and then That's we're already still where we were, so they're pushing, they're, they'll push the can down the road, like, okay, we'll give you another restructure for another six months, which will still continue accruing uh, the interest on the, on the P&L. Okay. But, but Martin, I mean, it's what you're saying is that we are seeing the operations, the corporations are still strong. For example, you're saying KCB, 12% growth in uh, in the corporations before you include the cost of risk. But then you're also saying there's a, at some point you can't keep pushing the can down the road. So th does this 12 percentage point growth then revert into negative? N not necessarily. No, it, be, it depends on, I remember actually talking to a CFO bef when uh, the CBK gave that guideline. It was all about how smart or how, actually that's the one, how smart is management in uh, noticing, uh, the foreseeing how tough the environment is going to look like. For instance, if let's say the, the, the management that went ahead and uh, I will talk about COP. About Actually, let's talk about COP because Cooperative Bank just preempted it. I don't know if pro Cooperative Bank, their numbers were down 3%. Yeah, right, yeah. equity was down 24 percent. Yeah. Um, KCB, depending on what numbers you're looking at, at 40 percent. Yeah, down. yeah. What's 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 exceptional with cooperative bank? Uh, every time I come here, I always say I'm. Uh, I don't know if I've ever said this, but I'm not. Uh, um, a very uh, a big fan of cooperative bank, and they're proving to me why, because from a proactive perspective. All the lenders, uh, just I'll give you an example. Look at how they've restructured their debt, their loans basically. Uh, they, they waited for clients to come forward, and if a client didn't come forward, they never restructured, which quote unquote makes sense, all right? But how are the macros looking like? If that client didn't come, however, they, exp they have exposures in tourism, real estate, building and construction, which is there on transport, which they still do, and quite a number of corporates, and how the macros are looking like, I expected them to be more proactive. Exactly. Okay? So they have just restructured 13% of their loan book, yet the industry as of <laughs> June was 29%, all <laughs> right? Yes. KCB uh, equity, you're looking at 20, uh, what are we talking about, 45%, KCB 22%. Uh, upside, north of 30%. Is it, you're seeing the trend. And these are all tier one banks. They're all tier one banks. What makes you, I remember during their earnings call, their conference call with analysts, I asked them, are you are your clients immune to, to the macro space? Okay. okay. Because it doesn't add up. And I think, and, and to me the challenge and my worry is that if they are out of touch with what their clients are facing, they might be in for a surprise down the road. Exactly. Okay? And their NPLs will spike. Okay. So maybe our graphics team can put up the numbers for um, cooperative banks. So are you saying that 3%... Could it be minus 25% at the year end? Oh, I, absolutely. Yes. I, I, on a very serious note, because their cost of risk was the lowest, 1.4%. Okay. All right. 
Uh, you're looking at, I said, 4% for um, equity, KCB, 4%. Um, NCBA, the highest, I don't know if you'll talk about that, 6%. Standard Chartered, okay, 25 Actually, we can put up the Standard Chartered numbers. Yeah. Yes. So, so we, 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 I'm just struggling because from an operating profit perspective actually cop was flat the rest actually they the actually had good numbers had good numbers it, it was pretty flat so it just looked like it's, it's 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 smart account yeah Great. okay not okay. creative accounting but let's not push that envelope okay. <laughs> yeah because yeah let's not, but let, let us argue on what you can see here okay. what you can see here is very simple how can you have such a low cost of risk yet your your tier one competitors are absolutely their income system are being shred by those loan loss provisions. And that not just your, your your competitors in this market. It's a global it's phenomenon. It's a global phenomenon. It's, Thank it's, you very it's much. It's happened because I was looking at the Chinese numbers. They move from not something to 3% in three months alone in terms of cost of risk. So I'm like, I mean, we are not the same level. We are not at par with China. But if you're going to say globally this is happening, locally it's happening, then what, I, what, is, what is not happening with your numbers? What is the story there? A and what was surprising was that when we asked them what's your guidance, what do you think uh, the fourth quarter by end of the year, what are we, what are we looking at? They talked about 1.8% cost okay. of risk. That's it doesn't make sense. And, okay. and I, I think I think the shock, I think uh, if um, I think we'll start seeing probably a correction come that quarter. All right. But a full year will now tell us the whole story because those will be the audited so numbers. So those, those are audited numbers. Those, are those audited one have numbers. to be in line with uh, with IFRS. With IFRS. Okay. Because technically when you restructure that loan, that loan because it has already shown uh, signs of weakness and some uh, distress levels, it should at least go to stage two. Because you remember there are three stages yes. in IFRS 9? Yes, there So are. at least should go to stage two. Bef okay. All right. Yeah, I'm Let's still just <laughs> struggling. So, Cooperative Bank, a yeah. huge question mark there. Yeah. Let's briefly look at standard chartered numbers that uh, that's coming up your screen. Was there anything divergent from what's happening in the industry for this one? Not really, but uh, for some time now, I've always not been an advocate for standard chartered. Okay. Uh, simply because I think uh, standard chartered, uh, they've never been able to readjust their business model post rate cap. And if you notice the operating... So since 2016? Yes. Okay. Just go ahead and check. All right. They have, they have the least loan to total assets ratio among the tier one banks. I think around 40%. 40, 41 percent. Their loan to deposit ratio is in their 50s. They're basically almost almost operating like a fund manager to some very great oh, extent. Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay. So their loan to deposit ratio is the least. Okay. And and I think the only. So then, what do they do with their fund? The, the only they have the lowest return on equity. Actually, if you look at the return on equity pre rate cap, okay. They are playing the same league with Equity Bank, actually, like almost the, in their return on ec of equity space. And that's why the, the counter is trading at quite a good premium. Right now, it's trading at par. And I think the only reason it's trading at par, in my view, so honestly, at par is it's trading at its book value. At its book value. Okay. Almost at par. The only reason it's trading at par is purely because of its liquidity. It's illiquidity. Okay. Because it's an illiquid counter. It, it, it is a relatively okay? liquid it's a counter. Illiquid counter. Okay. Because you look at your KCB, it's technically trading at 0 0.8, 0 0.9 times. And with its ROE vis-a-vis -vis standard chartered. Standard and chartered should be considerably lower. Should be considerably lower. Okay. Yeah. So they've never been able, because the operating profits down 7.8%. That is let's say eight percent so it shows you even its cooperations uh not doing well uh, the only thing i saw a positive there was the uh, cost of funding uh, that was the least uh wow. yeah it What's was the least 1.9 percent oh, i i really need to ask management that okay it shows me they, they have mobilized quite some really cheap funding that is uh that's helping them but they've also been aggressive in terms of financial technology we keep seeing them out there saying refer somebody to open an account yeah you then you give you 500 yeah and they have also interesting investment products so they have cre um, created access to your mobile phone to be able to access the local um uh, uh, fixed Bonds. income market yeah. and also global funds so you can access etfs 
Fair enough. But yes. do you know how I interpret that? I just yes. look at the income statement. I look at the non-funded income You're to like, total income. And how is I that? don't see it. You don't see it's it. Still, it's still, it's still, <laughs> it's still pretty low. Okay, so it, this thirty-one point three percent drop. Uh, exactly. Okay. Uh, and and uh, the yield on loans came down. That shows me that now uh, two things here. Uh, they sh they must be passing through the the CBR cuts to their clients, which is good. Uh, however, you need volumes now on that play because it's no longer a margin scheme, it's a volume scheme. So exactly. you need volumes. So they need that. to sort of scale that they up. They need to scale okay. that up, yeah. All right. Yeah. Then we have one other one. Um, that's Diamond Trust Bank, which is just coming up on your screen now. Anything interesting there? Anything out of the ordinary there? DTB have the highest, highest tier one capital, which I wonder why they're holding it. And that that highest tier one capital is what is making them lag like crazy because uh, you look at the return on equity even pre rate cap it was the least at around eleven percent. Okay. So uh, there's a reason why that counter is trading at a discount. It's zero point three times book value. Is, is there a value um, trap? Is it a value yeah. trap or I mean, because the, the numbers are down thirty eight percent to two point four billion in line with other market participants. But look at the operating profit. Okay, still lags. I can't remember the number offered, but I remember it still lags. It was right. down year on year. Uh, and the expenses are actually growing pretty fast. They're still exactly the All opex right. is growing faster than the top line. Uh, and this, okay, we didn't touch about this, but across all most of the banks, we noticed quite a big dip in fee income quarter on quarter because, of course, of what uh, the, the regulatory action on waiver, waiver on mobile fees. Okay. Uh, so, DTB, going back to DTB. No. So, 0. The, 0.3, the, come the, on, there has to be value at some the, point, Martin. No doubt, no doubt. I remember actually coming here and <laughs> uh, saying that uh, I think it's oversold. Yes. All right. But they are holding excess capital. They have the highest. They have 20% in tier one capital. What should they do with that capital? That's the thing. They're not growing your risk weighted assets. I should be seeing if you're holding that as ex excess capital, then two things here. I should be seeing you uh, growing that balance sheet aggressively and not just the balance sheet, but the risk weighted assets. Those loans need to be growing at a fast pace. Yes. I'm not seeing that. Okay. They've been lagging. They're very conservative. Secondly, they have such a huge exposure on uh, trade, manufacturing, uh, building and construction, which is and real estate. All high risk all, areas. All high risk areas. Okay. So, so it, it's going to be tough. It has to make value at some point. You can't, You have to give me an indication. Uh, I mean, 0 0.3, like, unless you're telling me we should be trading at 0 0.1 times <laughs> book value. Come on. I need, I need, okay, I need to run the numbers. Let <laughs> okay, me, let me not enough. speak off the whim. Fair enough. Uh, fair let me, enough. let me run the numbers. Fair enough. Uh, maybe another bank we can talk about is NCBA. Okay. Uh, most analysts, I don't, th don't think they did this. Mm -hmm. Just a like for like comparison because the yes because this the, the major yeah right. the major happened in Q four yeah first of October so from a like on like comparison <laughs> the operating profit was up thirty four percent okay yes which is very for solid. which bank for NCBA for group. NCBA group yes okay so, so up thirty four percent if you did NIC okay. group and CBA group the consolidated the last numbers. Year, thirty four percent. Thirty four percent. Imagine, yes. So at twenty three shillings we should be buying it? No, 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 no. <laughs> Here's the catch. Here's the catch. The thing is that um, the cost of risk was the highest, six percent. Okay. And still the same thing with DTB. They they suffer from suffer from those exposures to especially and I see you had scaring legacy loans in transport sector. Uh, we have trade, we have steel real estate, we have manufacturing. They, they really have exposures in those uh, in those segments. Uh, Thou notwithstanding the names are very they're, they're very, very thin. The, the net, net interest, interest margins, margin. yes, okay. both for DTB and NIC or NCBA for that matter, they are very thin. Their cost to cost to income ratio very sound, uh, low of mid forties, which is very solid. However, those net interest margins we need to grow them. They they need to grow them, and they will only grow them by reducing their cost of funding. The cost of funding for NCBA it's as simple as a tier two bank. It's four percent, which it really doesn't make sense. Does it? It makes. Do you know why it makes sense? Okay. It makes sense because. Uh, in as much as the group has been formed and we have this tier one bank from an asset perspective, okay, 
is still at year two. Okay. Because so they, perhaps they, people should stop expecting tier one treatment even from customer service and just say like, mm, give it time. No, no, no. From a customer service <laughs> perspective, no. They still, they, 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 I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think they do give some really nice world class okay. service. Okay. My, my worry, my question is from our bottom line perspective. Okay. So yeah. then, mm. so uh, should we buy NCBA? Should no. we not buy it? No, I hold. Honestly hold it. Speaking, yeah, hold, hold it. Hold. Okay. Because they return on equity until I see that cause those names coming for uh, expanding. Because the names I think will be the game changer. Because they're doing a fantastic job on the non-funded side, all right? But they're being hit on that top line because of the funded, the, the names are, are contracting um, um, significantly. Okay. fair enough. And, and the idea was to increase the retail footprint by opening up more branches. Okay. That now has been shelved with the COVID situation. Okay. Right? So yeah. a lot of numbers coming in, some good, some That's not so good. bad. Yeah. So what's what's the conclusion? I mean, when we're looking at the tier one banking sector, we've seen a rally on equity bank, we've seen a rally on the likes of KCB, cooperative bank, not so much. So for these banks that we've talked about, equity, KCB, Standard Chartered, NCBA, DTB, what's, mm -hmm. what's the final um, verdict? Uh, and what, what final verdict and is the second half of the year going to be worse, or have we gone through the worst si uh, cycle? No, I, I think this. Uh, I think the second uh, the second half will just pick up from where the first half ended. Uh, I think now investors have an idea that things are going to look bad. By now, I think most lenders should have issued the profit warning. I think it's all a matter of when, exactly. not if. Okay. The profit warnings are going to check in, no doubt about it. And I think there'll be no dividends, which. Any smart investor for so this there'll be no in dividends. March, yes, there'll this be one no we, we actually yes. talked about it in Ex depth. Exactly, there'll okay. be no dividends going forward. I think now it's all a matter of how soon are we see will we see some sectors uh, picking up like um, hospitality, tourism. We're already seeing now bouncing back slowly, slowly. So we just look out for the numbers. We look out for the numbers okay. and. Um, from a uh, from a stock market perspective, the the counters. I don't think. I think the rally is purely because you're coming off some really historic some lows. lows. Yes. Okay. Equity Bank has never been in sub thirty in I over know, three I know. I saw years. that on a Friday. Yes. I was like twenty eight point seven yes. five. Yes. Yes. It's never been that. That's really it's up twenty six percent. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so so I think. So what what are investors doing now? What, what are investors? I mean, you talk to investors, you engage with investors. Are they negative of us to investing on the NSC? Are they saying, okay, we are sort of at a place where we are plateauing in terms of the uncertainty on COVID-19 and we want to invest for the long term? Are we changing from cash is king to let's look for opportunities? Uh, I think it's depending on uh, foreigners because our market is still foreign denominated. Uh, I think... Uh, over the last few days, you've noticed foreigners checking in. I think it's more, it's a bit positive because I think we're slowly going back. We're slowly, I, I okay. think come end of September, I think we will go back now. I don't say fully, like almost 80% uh, from a macro perspective. I think investors right now have a sense of what to expect going forward. Okay, I think the worst is over in my view. Okay, so the it, worst is done. The worst okay. is done. But All I don't right. think the, the market will rebound to almost okay. to be nil. You remember, we're still over 20% down year to date. I okay, don't think we enough. will climb back all the way up yeah all right thank you yeah. so much martin that's all the time we had today thank is there you. any one stock pick you want to leave our guests with our watch our audience with in terms of buy this is there a screaming buy in mind? <laughs> at the moment no, no? At the moment, so we just none. hold at the moment none at okay. the moment just hold all right uh what i can say is that um i we did as uh, sib we did our stress test yes on uh, kenyan banks to see if if let's say there's a st uh, there's a financial Armageddon, <laughs> it's a bit of a strong word. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're if, you, if there's a financial Armageddon, uh, what happens? Exactly. Uh, and NPL spike by even over thirty percent. Will will uh, will banks survive such? Will our Kenya will our listed lenders survive such? They, they survived okay. the eighties, so <laughs> okay. exactly. So, so right, the point is okay, right now going right. forward. Will they, will they? Can they? And 
The beauty wow. part is all of them. All of them can. All of them. So can. we have a strong banking we sector. Still have a very strong So if it's a whole, then you should actually consider some bias. Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, wait not for a yet. bit more pain. Yeah, all right. Exactly, thank you so yeah. much for that okay. um, very insightful conversation. That was Martin Murigi, who is a senior equity analyst at Standard Investment Bank. Looking at the banks, some good news, some bad news there. Looks like um, the worst could be more or less over, but we want to see what happens over the ensuing three months. Now, the banks such as Equity and KCB are trading at about 36 level. Martin thinks that this is a hold. Possibly if there's another bit of weakness, then there could be a buying opportunity for the long term. But I think we both agree that uh, perhaps the 30 or sub 30 level has sort of passed us by. So then you need to now redefine another entry point into the banks. If not, continue to hold on to them for the longer term. Thank you for joining us. I hope you can join us again tomorrow. We we'll still continue with the conversation of the earnings that are coming through. I will be giving a highlight in terms of the other non-financial sectors and telling you what is happening, what is good, what is bad, what is ugly. As you come back to us tomorrow, that's 1st of September, same time as always. Let us know where you're watching us from, what you would like to know, and see you then. Good day.